Dottie Crosley is one of the image makers who shaped the way a whole generation perceives and feels about skiing. <laughs> he doesn't, he though. Yeah. Seal ball, huh? Yeah, admit her so. Who, who are the other people there? That's her there? second husband, Gary Morton, and the two kids. Old Thomas. This is um, the working Her photographs press. for New Hampshire and the Associated Press capture a mid-20th century vision of glamour and adventure. Yep. <laughs> were you there? Yep. Oh, you remember that. Do you remember any of the early events that the reporters came to cover? Well, of course, the most exciting one for for me, for every for everybody, uh, was the was the '67 World Cup at uh, at, at Cannon Mountain, and it was Jean Claude Keeley's, um, you know, the, the the year before he won the uh, the Olympics, and he shot through the gates. It's just you know, I, you know, I had a pass, of course, but I always try to get myself in a little bit further than I'm supposed to be. I thought I saw something. And I pushed the shutter, but I had no idea what it was, except I just had this brush of wind going by my cheeks. First I saw this, and then this split second of seeing the, the, uh, seeing the um, mm -hmm. um, figure in between the gates. And you just got it. Yeah. And it was the first World Cup ever in, in this country. And, uh, and it was covered by... Um, um, uh, te television and co color TV, and that was the first time they had a um, electronic um, um, results. That looks like our early press centers. Now, this, yeah. And that looked like a press center. It's the <laughs> boiler room. Yeah, it's a garage, but it's right. all right. So fortunately, it worked out. My problem was that I had to give the dark room over to to UPI. The AP got the broom closet. <laughs> they didn't like that very much. But so I couldn't process any of my pictures until the whole thing was over, and I was having fits because I didn't know whether the cameras were working right or not. And uh, I thought, oh, God. <laughs> and so I had my heart in my mouth. You know, today with the digital, everybody knows exactly what they've got. Innsbruck of 76, I processed film and can in a bathroom. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've all done well, that. Well, you had running water, water, you know? I had running water and darkness. Something being a single, being a female, you know, with all of these guys, I, it was very unusual. To, I was, I guess, one of the early, one of the early ones to get out doing that kind of work side by side with these big six, six footers. It was good experience. I guess I held my own. <laughs> so, what other pictures did you bring that you want to talk about? Well, um, you asked about tra um, travel and of this. I'd say that one of the, there, there are two things that, that the, the um, um, ski riders have done for me personally, which is, which is just wonderful. I mean, I'm forever indebted and forever grateful to them. And one is, one is the travel opportunities that, that they've given, which, is, which has been marvelous for me. And uh, the other are the contacts of the people that have, that have helped me. And in the realm of travel, we, when we went on the trip to um, out west to Montana and, and uh, Wyoming, and, uh, and we went through the pass on the, on the way to Jackson Hole, and, and uh, this, this mule, mule truck jackknifed across the uh, pass, and everybody was backed up, and so the, so the um, Ski riders who were feeling no pain, I guess, having a merry time, all got out and decided they were going to move the, the mule truck out of the way. It was a very funny time, and they wound up um, take, taking command of the bus. You know, to present. Uh, Byron decided he was going to be the be. The, he put a kerchief over his over his head and wore a black cowboy hat and and he and he got a banana and he said, "I'm taking over the bus." And so he, <laughs> the poor bus driver was. <laughs>